Hello you guys, it's Galatius and Latius, and for this video... Don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> I'm not interested in anniversaries or anything like that. Oh, but I you. am a little interested in you. Why, thank you, Sean. So, with that being said, uh... I think... Oh, not yet. Twelve. Oh! Oh, four hours. How dare you. Uh, I'm gonna read Subway Station in High Spirits, number five. Our right. first encounter is always perfect, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. The moment I sat down, I heard Cyril's words. Huh? P perhaps you're right. Why did you say At that? At the very start of everything, there are no misunderstandings, no pressure, and no memories. Just like flowers in the window. They I see what you're saying. The okay. Most beautiful at first sight. But yeah. soon, you will fear that the flowers will wither. If they are made to last forever, you will get bored of their color. If, will we? I don't know. Sarah looked upon me, but I dared not look back into his eyes. I felt like I was once hurt by that look out of my countless memories. Both this train and this person felt incredibly familiar. I tried to peek at him, but only looked into his gentle eyes instead. Feeling awkward, I forced myself to find a random topic. Come on, it's not that scary. Speaking of which, are you a pianist, Cyril? Cyril stopped for a split second, then nodded. His eyes moved to me again. You remember that? Yes, we do. Not really. I, I just guess it because I saw Is your that hands. So? Actually, oh. you heard me playing earlier. Uh huh. Really? Sorry, but my memories are a mess. Did did I like it? I don't think so. Uh oh. Oops. I nod. I noticed a smirk on Cyril, so I coughed awkwardly and turned around to continue looking at the window. As there is still no other people in the train, I felt it was necessary to discuss the weirdness with him. Finally, I plucked up the courage to ask. This train is really strange. It's going backwards. Don't, don't you know that? Does the direction really matter? Does it really matter? Of course. Why would you travel the opposite direction? Mm. Cyril had a complicated look on his face. For a couple of seconds, he then gave an awkward smile Actually, again. I have never been in a subway train. Perhaps there are a few imperfections. Yes. I didn't pick up his second sentence as I was more curious about the fact that he'd never taken a subway train station. H how did you get on the train then? Oh, we're magical, bro. Same as you, I guess. Uh-huh. I paused, trying hard to recall how I ended up in the train, but my brain was completely blank. It was really not long ago. Where was I going? Why was I in this train? When did Cyril show up? I tried even harder to think, only to find my memories became more blurried. I felt scared. What on earth is going on? Cyril, do you know where this train is going? I started to get anxious, but Cyril looked calm as always. His eyes were still gentle and caring. I could even see some dangerous passion. To a place you want to be. His voice descended upon me like snowflakes, but soon was interrupted by the announcement. Please mind your steps. Ha. The doors opened once again, but it was a completely different world outside. However, there were a few figures that I somehow felt familiar with. So embrace with. your imagination. Think of okay. everything you have ever wanted. Uh -huh. Eventually, uh -huh. we will arrive at the perfect ending that you've longed for. We are. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Miracle Finder movie set. I mean, is this really like... Oh, not all of them have a story? Oh, I see. Interesting. So we're going backwards, huh? As, yes, obvious. Is that really where we should be heading? I don't know. STF drill ground. Obviously, that would be Gavin's, right? I hereby make a vow to my country and my people. I will do my best to serve with all of my life and passion. I will be fearless and selfless. I shall never betray the values I hold. Under the sun, many earnest young men and women stood in lines, making vows the, with their right arms up high. I couldn't get my ass off the man standing at the very front, That every though. bullet in my gun will only be fired for justice. 
Okay. Gavin's face looked younger, looked younger and less mature. But I saw the same fortitude in his eyes, which never changed with time. I mean, he's always the same. No, I'm just kidding. I looked at him in silence. My fingers curled slightly. I never expected the train to take me here and let me witness this moment. Oh. After the ceremony, young police officers started celebrating with their families. But Gavin only glanced around, then looked down at his police badge in his hand. He seemed to be thinking of something. I put my hands to the back and strolled towards him. Congratulations! Gavin was all frozen when he saw me. His amber eyes were full of surprise. Who are you? Oops. I'm Angela. Angela's cousin. Oh, God damn it! I screwed up. She had classes today, so she asked me to come. The shock in Gavin's eyes changed to alertness. Unconvinced, he looked me up and down, but still nodded all in right. the end. Thank you. Okay. He replied politely, but I still captured some disappointment. I have a mission from Angela. I reached out a hand to him, which is to put this badge on you. Aww. He was slightly shocked, but didn't take any action immediately. After staring at me for a while, he passed the police badge to me. I gotta take it. Oh, that's cute. The metal, ba the metal badge rested on my palm. It had shiny edges and felt quite heavy. All those things that happened to Gavin suddenly came to me. I stopped smiling. After taking a deep breath, I started talking in a very serious tone. No matter what happens in the future, remember you must always keep your faith in justice. Anyway, I know you would still do so without me saying it. I put the badge on him as I talked. From the corner of my eye, I saw his eyelashes slightly move. Did she also ask you to say that? Maybe. Yep. I moved back a few steps and looked at Gavin. The badge on his chest was the highlight of all colors on this brand new uniform. It was as brilliant as the light in his eyes. Other officers were calling Gavin's name from afar. He glanced back and frowned. It's time for you to go, it seems. Wait. Oh, he's blushing. Why? Aw. What's wrong? Gavin scratched the back of his neck, looking Please away Please tell her. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to keep that one, delete the other one. Tell her to take care. Oh, Gavin paused and looked into One my day, eyes. We will meet again. Yeah, we will. My heart suddenly started racing. It wasn't the most beautiful language, but his sincere words almost made my eyes wet. Oh, sure, I will let her know. I will let her know. I smelled the light fragrance of ginkgo as leaves swayed in the breeze. The young boy stood in the sunset, his face slightly blushed, like the clouds on the skyline. Oh, that was too cute. Let's see. Oh, Loveland Arena. Arena? I don't know. When the white light disappeared, I saw another golden light. Then I found myself in the middle of a crowd cheering loudly. Where am I now this time? You know, I looked around and saw people everywhere. They were waving golden light sticks, left and right in rhythm. Every single one of them was chanting the same name. Kiro, 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 where are you? <laughs> Why am I here? Dumbfounded, I tried to glance around, but was attracted by a familiar figure, his face back facing me. On the stage, surrounded by the cheering fans, the blonde boy covered his eyes with hands, with his back facing the screen above. Five, four, three, two, two. Kiro! He intentionally dragged the last countdown and finally said stop after a long time. The flashing faces on the screen came to a stop. I heard gasping sounds everywhere. All the eyes suddenly gazed upon me, every single pair of them, just like the spotlights on the stage. Wow, you have been chosen as the lucky soda. What? OMG, OMG. I'm so jealous. Hurry up. Go to the stage now. Help me tell Kido how much I love him, please. This is the special privilege of Kido's first concert after returning to the country. I felt so salty. I was pushed out of the crowd, seeing my frozen face on the big screen. I still couldn't believe what was happening. On the stage, Kido put down his hands, following the spotlight. He looked at me with curiosity. Are you my lucky soda today? Oh, yes, we are. Kido waved at me with smiling eyes. Stage lightning was reflected. Lighting was reflected on his blonde, beautiful, shiny hair. His pure, sincere eyes looked very serious, but I didn't see the familiar report between us. It was more like he was looking at a nervous fangirl. 
My brain was still empty, so I shook my head subconsciously. Kido froze for a one second, then blinked his blue eyes with a little bit you of mischief. You can't deny it. It was all on camera. Oh shoot! Plus, if you're nervous, I'll be nervous too. No. Uh -oh. I tried to calm my breathing and not sound too shaky. I can't let him know. S Sorry, I just, I just never imagined that I would see you while standing here. The microphone recorded my nervous voice and played in the entire stadium, causing lots of laughter All and cheering. Right, my one out of ten thousand lucky soda. Are you ready to use your privilege? Ooh, what privilege? Oh, what does a lucky soda usually do? Get drunk? It's completely it up to you. I'll do oh. whatever you want. How about that? I'd like to spend a day with you. Like to hear you play music. We could go to the movies, the beach, anything, anything. Anything. Oh, well. <laughs> um, well, yeah, no, no, there's some exceptions. You can't ask for sexual favors. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Can you please sing another song? Kido was a little sh shocked, but burst into laughter. His eyes narrowed like crescents. It's been ages since I last heard a wish so basic and simple. You sure you don't want another one? No. I looked at his eyes strange, strangely. I suddenly found peace of mind and shook my head steadily. I wasn't a good fan because I came in too late and missed a lot of songs. So could you sing me another of your favorite songs, please? I'd love to hear them. Kido's pupils moved. He seemed to be surprised at my presence. I see. I see. Kido looked to the side of the stage and nodded. The spotlights nearby dimmed. A ray of light came from directly above. Golden sequence slowly fell from the sky. The whole stadium went into silence, waiting for the star to shine once again. He took off the headphones and followed the light to the piano. After sitting down, he started playing a melody. It was his first written song, which had stayed with me through countless nights of mornings. I couldn't help but start singing along quietly. Soon, all the fans in the stadium began to sing as well. The chorus rose to him under the golden light. Like tides running to a quiet island. Oh, this is adorable. He felt like a wharf. If uh, he felt like a wharf that could provide everyone a short stay and comfort before they depart again. Engulfed in the golden stage light, he looked like a sun that never sets. All of a sudden, the sun became increasingly bright, almost absorbed by the light emitted from itself. And he was looking at me right at the end of the white light with a sincere and gentle Thank smile. You. For coming to my concert. Oh, you're welcome. Aw, you're very welcome. Okay. Souvenir. Victor. Shall we try this restaurant? It's so small. I've never heard of the name. Let's try the beef before the corner. Around the corner. A couple walked past me, chit-chatting. I looked at the familiar but somewhat strange shop, slightly shocked. Under the sun, I saw the sign hanging outside. Souvenir. Confused, I pushed the door open. Hello? I slowly walked into the shop as the door chime, chime rang. Souvenir looked a lot newer than the one I knew. All those decorative, decorative shelves that used to be full of crafted items were all empty. Because we're not in the past. <sighs> but the green plants next to them were still swaying lively with the Who's breeze. There? Who's there? Is that Victor? Probably, obviously. Who else would have a voice? <gasps> he spotted me. I heard footsteps from the kitchen. Victor walked out as he took off his cleaning gloves. Oh, I like his surprised look. It's always fun to get him in a surprise, like, Victor look. Slightly surprised. He looked up at me. I could stare at this face all day. <laughs> Come back next time. Victor, you don't know me. How dare you? I want your pudding. Um, when, when will you be officially I'm open? I'm not sure, but definitely not today. Oh, he looked around at the somewhat empty and messy shop. Souvenir wasn't ready to open to the public indeed. Something came to my mind, so I raised my right hand. Let me help you. My stomach rumbled just after I spoke. I hope he didn't hear that. Hi. Hi. What does she mean? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Asshole. Victor let out a sigh and pointed me to sit before turning back to the kitchen. A delicious aroma came from the kitchen later. Victor walked out with a dish in his hand. I would love to try his food one day, man. 
I'm not a pudding fan, but I'd try it. I would love to try this food, though. He put the plate in front of me and looked at my confused face. Victor, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Dig in. Screenshot worthy. God damn it, Victor. You look like a person that I know. That's definitely not me. <laughs> I don't have an evil twin brother. Victor glanced at me and turned me down immediately. He probably thought I was hitting on him. <gasps> How dare you? Come on, Victor. She's hitting on you, man. Ah! To avoid making the situation more awkward, I changed the topic. So, am I the first customer of this shop? Victor said he's like, yeah. Yeah. They invented without I mercy. Think other customers would insist on staying for food after seeing such a messy place. Oh, he's as bossy as always. He's never changed, ever. Uh, I couldn't help but mumble. What did you say? Uh, nothing. You didn't hear me. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Ha! 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 I don't know, man. Nothing. I said your dish was good. I quickly grabbed the cutleries and fed myself a piece of prawn. What the hell is prawn? The food was rushed, but still delicious. I swallowed the prawn with satisfaction and nodded to Victor continuously. It's so good. Trust me, you will be the best chef in Loveland City. Listen to me. I can tell you the future. Do you always talk so much when you eat? <laughs> Maybe. Victor was unimpressed with my exaggerated compliments, but for some reason, he seemed to be in a good mood. Is he always in a good mood? Is he actually is he ever in a good mood? <laughs> I muttered to myself inside my head as I quickly finished all the food. He looked at my empty plate and satisfactory face. I noticed a quick, not easily detectable smile on I'm him. Not officially open yet, so the dish is on me. Really? Oh, um, what I mean is, I can't just see for free. Maybe I can do something to... A bit surprised, he looked at me and gave an eye gesture, pointing at the plate Just and cutleries. Just clean the table, then. Okay, that's fair. I suddenly remembered my first visit at Souvenir when he also asked me to pay my bill with cleaning. <laughs> I burst into a chuckle. So funny. <laughs> you have no idea, man. You asked me this the first time. What? Oh. Oh, nothing, nothing. I will pay my bill right away, sir. I quickly stood up and started cleaning. Victor didn't move. He was a bit surprised that I accept the condition so easily. Why would a stranger really why would a stranger really just do that? I find that weird, but impressing. <laughs> As time went I went by, the sun shone through the window, painting the table with golden light. Finally, I finished cleaning, but Victor was gone when I looked up. The door to the kitchen was half closed. Excuse me, I'm all done here. I pushed the kitchen door open, but Victor wasn't there either. Instead, I saw a bowl of pudding on the table in the kitchen with a note under it. I picked up the note and saw his familiar handwriting. I felt surprised, but I felt touched. For Souvenir's first customer ever, don't forget to close the door. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> oh, this is Lee Senior. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was cute. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, of course, uh, don't fall on me, bro. Don't fall on me, heavy ass brick. Okay, it's still working. I stood in the brightly lit airport among the many busy travelers. A pleasant voice in the PA system was reminding passengers to board the flight. The train took me to the airport. Who didn't want me to see this time? My mind was still absent, but the numerous noise around me soon engulfed me. Oh, I heard he was the most popular professor now. Not only he had a PDH. De de degree in neuroscience. He also published many papers in international journals. Well, I guess he is probably socially awkward nerd. Hey, 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 hey. Oh my god, I just can't wait to see this genius professor listen. The two students were still chatting, but I stopped paying attention to them. I just saw the familiar figure across the crowd. I could see his well-lit defined face clearly under the light. He walked toward us in a steady pace, pulling a luggage behind. Even after spending many hours in the flight, he didn't seem exhausted at all. Is he ever exhausted? No, I'm just kidding. Lee Sin, is that you? Who is she? How does she know my name? Is she from the future? I made a silent exclamation. He was looking for something, but then stopped and stared at me as if he had telepathy. Oh, oh that word. That's like 
It's been used a lot. <laughs> Turn up bushy. I saw some emotion in his eyes. I saw it. His eyes are speaking. Hmm. Are you? Are you here to pick up Professor Lee Sin? You should take. You should have a sign too. Take this one. I was interrupted by the student's words before I could answer. He shoved his sign, saying, "Welcome, Professor Lee Sin," into my hand. Hey. I suddenly noticed some shadow over me. When I looked up, I saw Lee Sin with a gentle smile, as always. Oh. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, love. With a light smile, Lee Sin glanced around and gazed upon me, as if he was looking me up and down. Excuse me, who are you? <gasps> oh my God! It's Professor Lee Sin. Oh. I'm, I'm Lee Sin. No. Oh, so, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He pointed at the airport pickup sign in my hand. I'm the one you're waiting for. Okay. Huh? Oh, oh, I read that. Okay. I heard two <gasps> gasping sounds. Both students with their eyes wide open, bulging with surprise. They quickly started introducing themselves in anxiousness and excitement. Lacey and smiled and greeted them as if he was already used to such reactions. He then turned sideways to look at me. He remained silent. His smile turned into an inquiry. What? I panicked a bit and talked quickly, though. Nice to meet you, Professor Lacey. Oh, my God, I'm nervous. Do you also take my class? Did we? Perhaps. Um, I don't. I see. That's a shame. Well, I'll join it. Actually, I would like to join one of his lectures. That'd be kind of fun. He looked a bit regretful. For some reason, I felt so sorry for him. But I'm also very interested in neuroscience, so I'll make sure I go to your class often. Lee Sin looked surprised for a split second. His eyes narrowed as he Is smiled. Is that so? Yeah. I will save a seat for you then. He bended slightly and nodded at me with a smile. I felt his familiar scent and my face blushed immediately. My cheeks were touched by his warm breath. He whispered in a low voice that could only be heard between us. Ask me any time if you have any questions. Oh, that was short. Oh, that was too cute. <laughs> that was interesting. So, yeah, that was Time Subway Chapter 5. Oh, my God. So, 12 o'clock. What, what time would that be here? So, 12. Ooh, 4. Yeah, I think it would be 4 o'clock here. I don't understand, like, why they locked the last chapter. Obviously, we got to have some mysterious stuff. But, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Does all of these have? Ah. Uh... I see. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. By the way, that was an enjoyable chapter or time subway station number five.